Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. Now, we are not reinventing the wheel this week. We're making bowl cozies, and I know you all have seen tutorials everywhere for bowl cozies. So what makes this tutorial any different from those? Well, I might do something a bit differently. Okay, I know that when I first started making them, I had trouble getting over the dart right here on the edge. It didn't always work very well. And I've known other people who have had this issue. So I thought, why not make a tutorial about bowl, the bowl cozies and show everyone how I do it. So maybe it's a bit different from what you do, maybe it isn't. But even if you've seen a million tutorials, you might just want to stick around just because it's fun to hang out, right? Okay, let's go take a look at how Marie makes bowl cozies and let's see if you want to make some too. Let's go over and sew. Okay, let's take a look at what we're going to need. If you have layer cake fabric, you could use that, or you can cut your own 10 inch squares. And this is a good time for me to say, you could make these larger and you can make these smaller. You can change the size of the darts. You can do whatever you want to do. This is your project. Now, I also use scraps on these or things that I try to make look nice while using scraps. So this is just one that I liked the fabric. I uh, had a small piece of it left over from another project. So I made my own 10 inch square from that. The other side of the bowl cozy will be just the plain fabric. All right, so you will need two 10 inch squares, 100% cotton, no polyester blend. You're going to need two pieces of 100% cotton batting. And you're going to need thread that is 100% cotton. No metallic thread, nothing other than 100% cotton. Now, one thing I want to mention is about the cotton batting. This is something that many people put in the microwave, which I will get to in a moment, but uh, before I get to that, I want to say you need to be very careful with your batting. I just recently purchased a bolt, a complete bolt of 100% cotton batting, but I did not pay attention to one key thing. It said with scrim, okay? And you can say, well, what is scrim? Well, Scrim is kind of like a stabilizer. It keeps it so that it's not going to move as much. Sometimes it can be a glue. Sometimes it can be fibers. Well, what are those fibers made from? What are those glues made from? Are they microwave safe? We don't know. And that's why you have to be very, very careful with this. So you can buy Wrap and Zap which is absolutely 100% cotton, or you can be very sure that what you're buying is 100% cotton without scrim. And that way uh, it will be as safe as it can be. Okay, now that our lecture is over, I'll tell you what else you'll need. You'll need something to mark with, something to measure with, and cut. One thing I like to use is this. And I'm going to show you how I made that. It's very simple. Okay, I took, this is about, well, about three by six, let's say, but the size isn't really important, okay? What I'm going to do is make a mark. I'm going to make a little square here. And it's going to be one inch by two inches. Well, not a square, is it? It's a rectangle. Okay. See how I did that? That's one inch over and two inches down. Then I'm going to take my old scissors and I'm going to cut that. And this will be great when we go to mark where we're going to make 
our cups. Okay, so this is something that I use. It just saves me time from having to keep using my ruler when I'm when I'm making my darts. Okay. Before we get going making this, I want to tell you what I tell people when I gift them these. Personally, I do not put them in the microwave. I have read about fires caused by these. I personally just will not do it. But I know there are people who do it. They put their soup or whatever in a bowl and they put it in the microwave and they heat it. What I do is I heat whatever I'm going to be eating and then I take it out and put it in the bowl cozy, hold it and go to the couch or wherever it is that I would like to eat it. Okay, my son brought up a good point uh, when I gifted them some at Christmas time and he said, other than the uh, chance of a fire, the other reason that he didn't choose to put a bowl cozy in the microwave is a lot of times your food will spill over in the microwave and then you've got to wash it again. So I thought that was a good point. Okay, so we're going to take our squares and you might think, well, I only want to use one piece of batting because it's so thick I can't sew through it. Well, I can show you how thin mine are. I know you can't really tell how thin that is, but I'm sure you don't see any bulk in that seam. Now, I don't trim it close, I don't do any of that, but I will show you in this tutorial how I make my bowl cozies so that they're nice and thin, okay? Oh, and you're going to need an iron, and you're going to need a good iron. If you have one of these small irons, they can be great for small projects, but not for a project such as this. Okay, I have two bowl cozies that I'm working on here today. And with one, I'm going to show you using this small iron. And with this one, I'm going to use my bigger iron with lots of steam and way more heat and I'm going to show you what a difference an iron makes in how your bowl cozy turns out. So we're going to start by doing our usual. If you've done these before, you already know. You place your batting on the wrong side of your fabric. Now you can sew diagonally with an X. You could sew anywhere you want. You could quilt this every inch. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to use a serpentine stitch, my favorite, as you know, and I'm going to make an X on this one. On this one, I'll probably do at least one of one side a bit differently here. I think on this one, I'll quilt around the square here. So I will sew these and I will meet you right back here. And remember, 100% cotton thread, okay? We gotta keep everything as safe as we can with this project, okay? And I'll meet you right back here. There, I have sewn. I did a zigzag, well, not a zigzag, a serpentine stitch. And you know, some people mark a line, I used to, but now, and especially because I'm using a wavy line, I just eyeball it. You certainly could use uh, some kind of fabric marker. And now is a good time to say that I do own friction pens. I do. <laughs> I bought them when the whole craze first started, but I do not like them. And if you've been with me since the beginning, you know why, but if you're a newer subscriber, I will tell you. I cringe when I see people using these on their fabric where it's going to show. Just the day before yesterday, yesterday or the day before, I was watching a tutorial on a beautiful purse, and this woman put so much work into it, but let's say this was the front of her bag. She had lines all over it with her friction pen, and she said, I'll just use the heat of the iron to remove that. And if you're in a nice 
hot tropical climate that never gets cold, that probably works. But when you live where I live, it might work in the summertime, but the minute you go outside in the cool weather, all those lines show back up. So the heat may remove it for the moment, but it does not remove it forever. Anyway, end of lecture. That's the second one today. Okay, so these are all quilted. Oh, I just love that red. I love red in a kitchen anyway, but, and then this, this print, this fifties print, I just love that. All right, we're going to fold these in half and then this is what I use. You still could use a ruler. If you're using a ruler, I'm going to show you how to do it. You mark one inch this way. Okay. Like that. And you mark two inches down right on the fold. And then you make a mark diagonally. And this can be tricky. I found that gel pens tend to work better for me. Uh, but this is where I use my little tool. <laughs> I have this folded directly in half, and it's just easier to make those two little marks each time and line them up. And I don't have to keep using the ruler to find one inch and two inch. So we're going to do this to all four, well, all two of yours. I have another set of these going, and I usually pin these in half just to make sure they stay where I want them to. And sometimes this can get folded, so just put your finger there and smooth it out and make sure that that's exactly where you want it. And see, you want the, it looks like an L, like this, and that's how you want it. Just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and mark these and I will be right back. All right, all of our marks are made. Now we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch. Let's see which end of this I have. I need my pointy teacher end. No. <laughs> so you're going to back tack, sew to the end, and back tap. Now I usually tighten up my stitch length to a 1.8 or 2.0. And also, I didn't mention at the beginning, but I usually put a denim needle, a number 16, in my sewing machine when I make these. Uh, you'll be going through some thicknesses. So, And I usually chain piece these. Say I put that one through the machine. I put this one next, so on and so forth. So we're going to do this. We're going to sew these and come right back here. Okay, I have these done. This is what they should look like, look like little puppy dog ears. Okay, now you're going to open this up, fold it like this. Now you know me, I like to pin things, but I pin those exactly even. Oops, there goes my iron. <laughs> All right, we're just folding these in half. You don't have to do the part like I do in the middle if you don't want to. That's just me being really technical. Okay. It's not like we'll be sewing over them. I just do it in order to get it exactly in half. That's just me. 
So as soon as I show you one, I won't bore you with the rest. We're going to do exactly the same thing we did on the other side. We're going to make lines. We're going to make our marks for our darts. All right, I'm going to stop here and just show you. Yes, it looks a little bit bent compared to the first one that we had, but we're doing the exact same thing. One inch over, two inches down, and draw a diagonal sewing line, just like that. So you do that on these, sew them up, and meet me right back here. And we are back from the sewing machine. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. We should have this funny looking thing right here. That's what it should look like. All right, now we're going to snip. And I usually snip them fairly close within about an eighth of an inch but you do whatever you're comfortable with. If you want to leave a little bit more of, I'm going to show you that, so that when you put these two together, you can turn one seam one way and one the other, which I will show you in a moment. Okay. And you could use clips on these, I suppose. You know me, everything, I have to be so precise. So I feel like if I don't pin things in there, they're not going to be precise. Okay, I would be amiss if I didn't stop at this point and tell you that if you would like to take something rounded, make a mark and cut that off so that you could have flower petal shapes on the edge, you can certainly do that. For me, the only reason I don't like making them on the 10 inch squares is I don't feel I have enough of a space left to turn them right side out again. So when I make the flower petal or the rounded edge, I use either 11 or 12 inch on the square. Okay, right sides facing. So you're going to put one right inside the other. And the first thing I do is pin where my darts are. Now, when you sew these, you want to do one of two things. You either want to open these up a little bit, like, if I could grab it, like this, okay? Or, see, I have mine cut fairly short, so that's not really an issue, but you could fold one to one side, one to the other, and that could help with bulkiness, personally. Since I tried the iron trick, I don't have issues with bulk, but we'll get to that. All right, so for now, I want you to start with pinning your four darts so everything's even. And see, these I left a little longer so I could show you. This one's going this way. This one's going left, okay? So they're nesting kind of like a quilt block would if you were piecing a quilt block. All right, and one more. That's why I left a long one so I could show you that. Okay, so before I forget, the next thing I want to do is mark an opening, okay, that we're not going to sew. And I usually turn my pin the opposite way. So this is what I've done. I've left from here to here. We're not going to sew that, okay? Now you can pin as little or as much as you want around the rest. You're just going to line your corners up. 
you know me if you've been with me a while i like to use pins everything's got to be just so <laughs> and i know once you flip it right side out no one would ever know but i would know okay so we're going to pin this we're going to leave this open oops i guess i could do this one uh we're going to leave that opening we're going to back tack sew around and back tack oops oh, that's all right and we will just have this opening and i will meet you back here actually before i sew that i want to tell you this is where you need to choose your seam allowance personally i use a one quarter inch you could use the edge of your uh, sewing foot, which for some of the newer machines is, is pretty close to 3 8 You do whatever you're comfortable with, okay? There is no hard and fast rule on the seam allowance. Wow, that was fast, huh? <laughs> okay, the next thing we're going to do is clip our corners. All, right, all four of our corners. We like nice pointy corners. Then, right here, that's where I need my pointy thing. We're going to clip right here and right here, just to the left and to the right of our seam. And that's an important cut right there. That helps turn your dart and helps it to be where it should be when you flip this and if you if you've sewn close like I have you don't need to clip very far in okay now we're going to flip it right side out then before we go any further, I need to go finish my other one because I'm going to show you the difference between using an iron with a lot of heat and steam and weight to it, I guess I would say, and not. And it can make a difference in whether your machine will sew over this or not. I've seen it happen. I've had it happen to me. So... We had a discussion on the Facebook group just a week or so ago about this. Uh, someone asking, and you know, some people, and I know it to be true, they only use one layer of batting so that they, so that their machine will sew over the bulk. And I did have that problem before, I did, but I've solved it at least for myself, and I hope this works for you. my little pointer just gently poke those corners you don't want to stab through just gently push them and that's what it should look like at this point okay i'm going to pause this while i finish the other one get it to this point so i can show you the difference before we finish all right i have this one ready with the opening right here and this one now it doesn't matter which i'll choose the this one the one that's different to use with the small iron actually we'll do that first okay so what you're going to do first is roll your edges so that you can get your fabric all lined up here okay work it out to the edge and roll it just like this it does help to do it a little bit i think all right here is my turning area so that got a little folded turn that down a little bit get my batting on the correct side and everything one per side only right 
what I normally do with this while it's still open is take my iron and crease it on each side. I do have water in this. So if you see it leak out, that's normal for this iron. It does it, which is why one of the reasons I'm not crazy about it. But it's good for small projects. Okay. So I'm still working on the opening. This fabric turns dark, as you can see, from the heat of the iron. All right, I'm going to mark the end of that. I always mark the beginning and the end of my opening on anything, whether it's a bag or anything, so that I know right where it begins and ends. Okay, so some people would just go and start you know, line this up and they'd start sewing. And that might be fine for your machine. But some machines do not want to sew over that thickness right there. And this is where working with an iron makes a difference, okay? And I don't only work from one side, I work from both. So I would work around this I would do the corner, the dart, the flat, the corner, the flat, the dart, just working my way around like this. Especially the darts because that's the thicker area. And then you're going to flip it this way and do the same thing. You're going to go around. Just make sure that your front and back are even. You don't want them to be misaligned or anything. And I am working those darts with quite a bit of strength as much as I can do and then we're going to work on this one and do the same thing work around just straightening it and then opening this is where I have my big iron I have this on linen setting and the steam a little better than halfway up, although I might turn the steam up more than that. Okay, and I'm going to work my way around here. I'm going to let that steam. Wow, look how flat that's getting. And, and this is my point. This can make a huge difference in whether your machine will sew through that dart or not. Uh, I've had the issue before. My mom had the issue. She had a terrible time trying to get her sewing machine through. And she ironed and ironed until her arm hurt. And the problem was not what she was doing, it's what she was using. And she was using a small iron. I had it happen with, it was a full size iron, but it, even though it was on cotton, it really didn't get, <clears throat> excuse me, very hot. And I did not have steam. And I am a true believer that this makes a huge difference. So if you've ever had trouble with them, I want you to give this a shot. All right, now we're going to flip it. Same thing as the other one. We're going to do the second side. Get nice bit of steam. Especially in those darts. 
And this one I'm just quickly going around. I think that's my last one. We'll call that good. And now I'm going to show you the difference. Hopefully you can see here what the difference in these. I can take any one of them. I don't know. Whoops. I don't know how well you can tell what the difference is. But this one definitely has... See how it's squishier, whereas this one's pretty much flat? So, there is my rendition of why an iron matters. Okay, so for now, we're going to stop talking about the iron issue. Maybe you've never had that problem, and that isn't anything that you're concerned with. But I do know that a lot of people have had the issue where either their needle breaks right through here or their machine will not sew. So they've taken to using one layer of batting or trying different methods. And I just wanted to let you guys in on what works for me. Okay, And I'm sure other people have, have different ideas. This is just mine. All right, so we are going to top stitch an eighth of an inch around the whole thing. All right, so you're just going to work your way around the whole thing an eighth of an inch from the edge to top stitch that. So now is when I change my uh, stitch length to usually a 3.0, but at the very least a 2.5 millimeter because you want a nice pretty stitch okay you don't want anything too big because you are closing up an opening so I'm going to give that a shot and I'll meet you right back here
right, look at that. We are done with our bowl cozies. And silly me, I didn't even think to bring a bowl to show you. <laughs> but as you can tell, these would fit most size bowls like you have in your kitchen. And as I said at the beginning, you could use scraps. You certainly could. The only thing I would be careful of if you have issues at your darts is to make sure that you use scraps that seams don't all bulk up near there. Uh, you may have noticed when I sewed mine that my machine did have more trouble at the darts on two of these on the one where I used the smaller iron. I left everything the same. I didn't uh, go ahead and, and use the other iron on it. I just went with it to see what would happen on my new machine and that is how, how it went. So I want to thank you for hanging out with me today to make bowl cozies. I know you've seen a lot of videos for these, so I appreciate that you hung around to hear what I have to say about them. And I think our creative word of the day today is going to be red because I used an awful lot of red today, didn't I? So this is going to be our New Year's video. So I want to wish you all a happy New Year's if you're watching this when I release it. If not, well, it was New Year's when this was new. So thank you for hanging out with me here today at Marie's Scrappy Creations. You take care until next time. And remember, be kind out there. The world needs more of that. See you next time.